Let's go ahead and stand and worship with us. You guys sing, My Hope is Built. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I did not trust the sweetest phrase, but holy trust in Jesus. Sing Christ alone. Christ alone, cornerstone, weak made strong, Savior love, and the storm, He is Lord, Lord, Lord. When darkness seems I rest on His unchanging grace In every high and stormy gale My anger falls within me Sing that again Shall come with trumpet sound. Oh, may I then in Him be found, dressed in His righteousness alone. Fall asleep before the throne. Christ. up it's a new day dawning it's time to sing your song again whatever may pass and whatever lies before me let me be singing when the evening comes
day when my strength is failing. The end draws near and my time has come. Still my soul will sing your praise unending. Ten thousand years in them for Y'all saw the leg kick. That's good. All right, everybody stand up. You just sat down. I know. Stand up. We're good. Okay, here's what we're going to do. So there's been a burning question on all of your hearts when you came in the room today. Why the heck is there white things taped on the back of chairs at the front? Right? Maybe not. Maybe you said, who is this guy in this green and blue shirt? Hey, I'm Tyler. I got to say hey to you a second ago. Hey. So here's what I got for us today. We're going to move around to begin the service. I hope you're ready. If you didn't come to play games in church and have a good time, it's going to be tough. All right? So to, to set the tone, to set the tone, high five somebody around you and say, Jesus loves you. We good? I'm loving it. All right. And I love you too. Do that to somebody else and say, and I love you too. Tough crowd. Y'all are good. I'm hearing noises. All right. Okay, here we go. Y'all are going to see this package opened right before your eyes perhaps because it's christmas and i need to open it without fingernails somebody's going to come up with a knife in a second because that's the kind of church we have y'all i love it uh really so here's what you're going to do everyone come up to the front for me and grab this piece of paper and get your neighbor to tape it on your back i promise you it's got a purpose so everybody come to the front row grab a piece of paper and have a neighbor tape it to your back dun, 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 dun. Da 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 da. Boop. In a second, you're good. Y'all, we're gonna get to know each other today. We come to church today. We come to church today. And our, our EFAM online is thinking, what the heck are these people doing? Okay, does everybody have one? I'll join you in a minute. Did I put enough? Oh, we put enough out. I love it. I love it. Oh, excuse me, I'm just kidding. Okay, all right, everybody got a pen. Does anybody need a pen? Because we're about to write on these pieces of paper. All right, you are getting a pen distributed to you, and here's what's going to happen. Here's what's going to happen. You ready? All right, I need you to do this. We're going to have five minutes, five whole minutes. I need you to meet three new people. Or maybe three people you know, because I know a lot of us know each other. And you've got to write one of two things on their back, okay? So three people, one of two things. The first thing is what you're most thankful for for them for. So you can either write, hey, I'm most thankful for you, and just write a phrase. Put thankful for, bleh, whatever that is. Or if you've just met them, the best quality you see in them. So if you say, hello, my name's Tyler West, you say, you look dashingly handsome in that blue and green shirt. I would say that's awesome. That's my best quality, right? So what you're most thankful for them for, 
or the best quality you see in them. We've got five minutes, meet three people. The counter's about to start. Are y'all ready? Can we do it? One, two, three, go. All right, I am making my way back to stage. If you want to make your way back to your seat, that would work. That would work good. Here I come. We all coming. I missed some of y'all. I'm sorry. I tried. I tried. All right, so get your neighbor to help you get this off or reach around your back unless they taped it really, really well. And here's what I want to do. I just want you to hang on to this. All right, so hang on to this. You can go ahead and have a seat. Hang on to that because it has to do with what we did, to, what we're going to talk about today. But let me ask you, was that fun? I know some folks got real uncomfortable. This was really, really uncomfortable for you. Some folks just had a good time. But once you, after you did the first one, how did it feel? It really wasn't that bad, right? Like it was probably really comfortable, but then it was, ah, you know, it was kind of uncomfortable. But then all of a sudden it was like awesome. Well, here's what I want you to do. We're in this season of thankfulness, and I know everybody's going to read this. So you can go ahead and read this while I set the service up. But I want you to hang on to those because it matters. Because today I want to talk to you about something at Divine Church that we believe. And I want to tell you what you just did is you just honored one another. And how we honored one another, we talked about what we were thankful for. We talked about what we saw as the best quality in someone. Guys, wasn't that fun? Isn't that what church is about? Isn't that what it's all about? Isn't that what we get to do? So here at the Vine Church, we believe in honoring one another to glorify God. So that's what I'm going to talk to you about today. And this is what we do. We got to see all these awesome things we said and we miss some people i know there are some people that are not here with us today but we miss some folks that we're definitely thankful for hopefully we're going to get to spend time with them this week but at the vine church each and every week i want you to know we believe in honoring one another to glorify god because this this is what we do so this activity made me think of one of my favorite people uh if you know anything about me you'll know that i love business i'm a business guy obviously. (laughs) That's just how I roll. Business is just something that God's gifted me with, uh, and I wouldn't say that I'm great at it. I'm always learning, but it's something that just really drives me, right? And one of these guys in in business, if you've ever heard of him, he's been around what seems like forever in a year, is this guy named Zig Ziglar, and he says this, you can have everything in life you want if you will just help enough other people get what they want. You can have everything you want in life, everything in life you want if you'll just help enough other people get what they want. Today we we helped some folks. We gave some affirmation today to folks. Isn't that what we're all looking for sometimes? We just need to be seen. (laughs) We just need to be known. We just need to know that we have value. We just need to know that we have purpose. We just need to know that someone sees that we're on the right track. No matter what the noise is of the season, no matter what the noise is of everything going on. And so what I want to tell you is I want to grasp that Zig Ziglar quote a little bit today. And I just want us to be in the word of God and talk about how we at the Vine Church believe in honoring one another to glorify God. So if you have your Bible, if you would turn there to Luke 14 for me, or in the modern day age, if you want a thumb there, uh, we will have the scripture on your screen, uh, on the screen here. But I'm just a real firm believer in you being in the word that speaks to you the best. I'm going to be preaching out of the NIV version today. So if that's not you, if you're in a KJV or NKJV, NLT, ESV, there's hundreds of them. I'm just throwing them out there. It may sound a little different, but the message is the same, okay? So Luke 14 is where we're going to start. And we're going to talk about this idea of how we believe in honoring one another to glorify God. So Luke 14, verse 1 says this. On the Sabbath, when Jesus went to eat in the house of a prominent Pharisee, so pause just for a second. Think of how that sounds. If you've been in church at all, if you know anything about Jesus, he's eating at the house of a prominent Pharisee. Hang on to that. Isn't that crazy? Hang on to that. He's eating at the house of a prominent Pharisee, and he knew that he was being carefully, carefully watched. There in front of him was a man suffering from an abnormal swelling of his body. It wasn't turkey. I just want to let you know. It wasn't Thanksgiving. From an abnormal swelling in his body, Jesus asked the Pharisees and experts in the law, is it lawful to heal on the Sabbath or not? But they remained silent. So taking hold of the man, he healed him and sent him away. Then he asked, If one of you has a child or an ox that falls into the well on the Sabbath day, will you not immediately pull it out? And they had nothing to say. 
Before we go to our first point, I just want to talk to you a little bit about this guy named Luke. So when we talk about Luke, when we talk about Luke in the gospel, a lot of times when we look at Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, we say, well, was Luke with Jesus? And I want to tell you, he wasn't. Luke took a collection of about 100 people, and he got their eyewitness account. So he was uh, alive during the ministry of Jesus, but he actually didn't. He wasn't one of the disciples with Jesus. So when he's getting this story together, I think about all the people he asked that said he was at a prominent Pharisee's house. He was at a person high in society. He is at the pastor's house. He's at, he's at the, the small group leader's house. He's at this high, he's at Billy Graham's The Cove. Like, he is at this high place for a religious leader. And he's sitting there and he's eating dinner with these people. And this person needs to be healed. Now, Jesus is the Son of God. So hang in here with me for a minute. Do you think he knew the answer to the question before he asked it? Like the preeminence of God says yes. He knows the answer to the question before he even asks it, yet he still takes time to ask these guys, hey, can I heal this guy or not? The very creator of the universe asks if he can heal someone or not. How crazy is that? Does that not seem like... Jesus, uh, heal the guy. Like, <laughs> come on, he needs to be healed. He's swollen up. Like, he needs to be healed. And yet he still takes the time to ask the prominent Pharisee, the teachers of the law, the ones who could give a case for him more than anyone else on earth at the time. They know who God is. They know who Jesus is supposed to be. He asks him, can I heal this man? Brings us to our first point when we talk about we are here to honor God, uh, to honor one another, excuse me, to glorify God is this. The first thing Jesus did is he was willing to be in an uncomfortable comfort. An uncomfortable comfort. So I think about this. Jesus is, is comfortable where he's supposed to be. Who else can heal this man? He's swollen up. Odds are he probably wasn't invited to this party. He showed up off the streets. And he's probably been to multiple parties and asked these guys, hey, what does it take for me to be healed? What do I need to do to be healed? What do I need to say to be healed? What's the prayer I need to pray? How many times do I need to go to the temple? How many sacrifices do I need to give? What do I need to do to be healed? And so Jesus is in his comfortable mode because only he can heal him. But he's probably at the most uncomfortable place in the world, the prominent Pharisee's house, because he knows he's being watched. So we started this activity today getting really uncomfortable really uncomfortable we had to meet some new people we had to tell the people we love why we're thankful for them but didn't it become comfortable after a while wasn't it easier and easier i mean we said at the beginning that it was okay getting uncomfortable even if just for a minute and yet so many times in our walk with jesus we expect it to just be comfortable we expect it to just be easy like we can sit in our chair like we're supposed to be dining with the pharisees who cares that these people need to be healed who cares that they've come in multiple times and asked why in the world, what in the world do I have to do? Why in the world am I here? Like, where is God in my darkness? I'm swollen up. Like, I can't be healed. There's something wrong with me. And so many times we can get real comfortable and forget that God's placed these people in our life for a purpose. So what the heck do we do? Pastor Craig Rochelle says this. He's the pastor of Life Church, and he says this, and I've really grasped this in my walk with Jesus when it comes to uncomfortable comfort. He says this, to really follow Jesus, you have to become comfortable in a perpetual state of discomfort. To really follow Jesus, you've got to be comfortable, you've got to be comfortable in a perpetual state of discomfort. So to really follow Jesus, you've got to always be in an uncomfortable comfort, because the only way to move forward is to get uncomfortable if you've ever seen a baby walk, they get real uncomfortable. Like when you sit there, they've got like all these yoga poses they do and all these crazy things they can do. And they, they fall and they get back up and they just move all over the place and they figure things out. And you're like, that's got to be the most uncomfortable thing in the world. But all of a sudden to grow, they understand for me to walk, I've got to keep getting uncomfortable. For me to take my next step, I've got to keep getting uncomfortable. Yet when we're in a walk with Jesus, we think that it should just be easy, the time when we want it, when we want it, how we want it. And I wonder if that's where these Pharisees were. This swollen up man comes in and they're like, oh, here we go again. <laughs> He's going to come up here to get healed. Jesus, I know you got the cheeseburger and fries. I know we just trying to, we after church, we having lunch. <laughs> here comes this fool again who wants to be healed. But yet Jesus takes the time to get uncomfortable to talk to this man. And he's comfortable in that. And his uncomfortableness is that he's being watched by these Pharisees. 
Yet our uncomfortableness would be that this crazy man wants to be healed. (laughs) And our comfort would be that we sit with the people we know all the time and we miss out on the people that God's put in front of us. So if we want to honor one another to glorify God, we've got to understand that we have to be in this place of an uncomfortable comfort. You see, so many times today, we're going to go out to lunch, more than likely a lot of us. We're going to go out to eat. And I just want to say this. Is it really about the food that you eat? The popular thing in the world right now is, hey, let's go grab coffee. Because who doesn't want to grab coffee at 8.30 at night, right? Like, let's go grab coffee at Starbucks sometimes, right? Exactly. Me either. I would be up all night. I'm just at that stage of life. So, like, that's just the thing to do. It's the, it's the pardon the term, it's the sexy thing to do right now. It's the way to meet. Like, it's the cool thing to do. Like, let's go grab coffee. Let's go grab lunch. And I want to tell you, it's not the lunch that you're going to grab after this. It's not the coffee that you're going to grab with someone tomorrow morning. It's about the relationship you have. And are you willing to be uncomfortable with them and comfort because you know them? Are you willing to get uncomfortable? And the only way you can do that is if Jesus is at the center. But so many times, we want to always be in our same circles. We want to always be in this place to where, okay, let's go to lunch all the time. And we put so much value in that that we miss out. But that's not the point. The point is the community. The point is getting together. The point is, are these people helping you get uncomfortable so that you can grow in the Lord? And are you being uncomfortable with them? Not being a jerk. (laughs) Not being like, you have to do this. Like, God's not standing up there dropping that on him. But he is saying, hey, I've placed these people in your life. Because they see the best in you, they're thankful for you, and they're here to help you grow. And I want to tell you, to follow Jesus, we've got to be uncomfortable. We've got to stay uncomfortable. If we really want to honor one another to glorify God, we we got to think like everybody we meet has this thing taped on their back. And the words that I say to them today are the words that they're going to carry with them until I see them again. And will they know that I'm thankful that they're in my life? And will they know that I see the best in them? Or will they think, what a jerk oh my gosh, I never want to see this guy again. What in the world is going on with him? So many times in our Christian walk, though, we can be there, especially this time of year, can't we? I'm seven times guilty, especially because I shop late. And if you get the one gift that I was supposed to get and I see it in your cart, we're probably throwing down because I'm going to find a way to get it. I don't mean fighting. Don't think I'm all into fighting. I'm just saying you're going to pick something else up in the store and I'm going to grab that from your shopping cart and go run and buy it right quick. That's just how I roll. So I want you to know, like sometimes this time of year, we can get stuck. We can get stuck in this. And so today, as we get into this uncomfortable comfort, remember what we did at the beginning of this. And remember the importance of that. We are called as we honor one another to glorify God. So today, when you go to lunch, don't just honor the people at your table. Honor the waitress that's serving you. Let her know she's doing a great job. I bet she probably didn't want to work on Sunday. I bet she got screamed at from the table three over, right? Because they got her water order wrong. (laughs) I ordered lemon. Okay. Like, I'm sure she might have had a bad day. But if you honor her, how much greater will you be in the kingdom of God? How else can we show people Jesus if we don't do that? So let's continue our story in Luke 14 as we get there, as we get to rocking and rolling. (laughs) We ready? I promise you I'm not trying to to clear seats or nothing. We're going to be here. Luke 14, verse 7 and 8. And we're going to go all the way to verse 11, all right? So verse 7, Jesus picks up his story here, and he says, When he noticed how the guests picked the places of honor at the table, he told them this parable. When someone invites you to a wedding feast, do not take the place of honor. So think about this. Uncomfortable comfort? Like he's sitting there with the people watching them take the best place, right? Like he's watching them sit at the head of the table, and he just straight up drops in and says, Hey, when you get invited places, don't go sit at the table of honor. Isn't Jesus cool like that? Like, he just drops it. He just speaks it. Like, he just straight up says, hey, hey, what you're doing, it's not gonna, it's, it's not gonna do you any good. What you're searching for, only I can give you. There's nothing else in this world that you're gonna find by getting the best position in the place. Just watch me and watch what I do. Listen to what I say. And think about how uncomfortable that probably was to the person. Like, if I sat at the head of the table, I probably would've did, you know, you just kind of walk back, <laughs> you creep back, you look right and left. And he straight straight up says that. He says, do not take the place of honor for a person more distinguished than you may have been invited. If so, the host who invited both of you will come and say to you, give this person your seat. Then humiliated, (laughs) then humiliated. (laughs) I think about that. Like how humiliated is that? Hey, uh, Bob's going to sit right here, okay? I'm just going to need you to shove down just a little bit. Bob's going to sit. A lot of you did that in the rows today, right? (laughs) Gooch down just a little for me. Like, right? That's all we happened. So Bob's going to sit here, right? 
then humiliated, you will have to take the least important place. But when you are invited, take the lowest place, so that when your host comes, he will say to you, friend, move up to a better place. Then you will be honored in the presence of all the guests. For all those who exalt themselves will be humbled, and those who humble themselves will be exalted. So before we go to the next point, think about this. If you go and you read anything in the Gospels, you hear how Jesus gives these woes to the Pharisees. You've probably heard that. If you haven't, I would say, read that sometime. What he does is he has these religious leaders, and he says how hard their hearts are because they pick the best place in the synagogue. They eat at the best places. They go to the... Nothing wrong with the Piedmont Club, y'all. It's a good place. Praise God for the Piedmont Club. But that's where they go in like every week. And they make sure everybody knows they go to the Piedmont Club or they go to this place or they're part of this country club and they're part of this good cause. And they've always got the selfie at this cause. They've always got the prominent position. Like they're always in this place. There's nothing wrong with doing good, but the question is, where is your heart? And that's what he talked to these Pharisees because he knows that they're trying to take the best place of honor with God. They say, hey, I'm good because I tithe. I'm good because I serve. I'm good because of the acts I do, because of the ladder that I'm climbing and this thing called works. Like, I'm good because of how I'm born. I'm good because I've memorized the the Bible inside and out. At that time, they had memorized the Torah. I'm good because of that. Had nothing to do with their heart. They missed out on a man who needed healing at the beginning of this. And instead of seeing that, they kept silent. Instead, they were worried about where they were going to sit at the table. Don't we get there? I hope they don't put us by them people again. Oh, Lord Jesus. (laughs) Right? Don't we get there? We worry about our seat more than who Jesus has put in front of us. And I want to tell you, when we honor one another to glorify God, we can't be stuck in that. And so the second thing I want to talk to you about is this thing called honors humbleness. Really cool word, right? Honors humbleness humbleness so this time of year can get real crazy real crazy and i think of jesus he's sitting at christmas lunch he just left the office party he just left the 14 other parties he had to go to the 14 other friends and gave the 14 different gifts and went shopping and remembered oh crap i forgot batteries crap right like he's at this crazy dinner But he knows the purpose he has. And he's talking about honors, humbleness. And I want to tell you, that's what Christmas is about. That's the season we're stepping into. It's because the one who deserved the most honor humbly came and put the skin of flesh on. He put flesh on. He put sin upon himself for us. And it says, he's saying right here, hey, you care about your works because you think that's salvation. But listen to why I came. I humbled myself to come down to be one of you so that I could set you free. It says that he has the honor because he humbled himself. And when we talk about honor, so many times we think about the guest of honor, right? Like we think of the person who is in the best position, but what we miss out on is the person who has the most honor is the person who's the most humble. The person who doesn't have low self-esteem, hear me out. Humbleness doesn't mean that, that I think really down about myself and that my worth isn't there. Jesus knows what his worth is as the son of God. Instead, he thought of himself less and went and healed a man and said, this is how Pharisees, you can be saved. This is what you have to do. You've got to humble yourself to honor one another. Wasn't it kind of humbling to stand here and meet some people and talk some things that, hey, I'm real thankful for you for? Isn't that humble? Doesn't that take a little bit of uncomfort? Hopefully it wasn't humiliating. (laughs) If it was, I'm sorry. We'll pray (laughs) a little bit later. Hopefully it wasn't humiliating. But what you got to do was honor one another because you were humble enough to write something on someone else's back of all things. Isn't that crazy? Yet so many times we think the one that most honor is the one who, who sits in the best position, the one who has done the most things, the one who has given the most, the one who has served the most, the one who has the most Bible verses memorized, the one who's got it all together, the ones whose selfie profile pic in social media has it all together, like they've got the perfect filter, the perfect fit, the perfect everything, and they're with the perfect people, and they're always serving someone. They're, they're at the soup kitchen 17 times a week, and like they're doing all these things, and they've bought 20 different presents for 45 different kids, and they've got it all together, but they've forgotten The whole reason why they do it, the reason why you do it is to honor one another, to glorify God. 
And it's humbling to say, I don't, I don't know how I'm going to make ends meet, but I know somebody's got it worse than I do. And I'm going to humble myself and trust you, Lord, to come through on this. And I'm going to honor this person who may not have a Christmas so that I can have a Christmas, so that they can have a Christmas, excuse me. I'm going to go before and give my Christmas up so that they can have one. And that's when it gets uncomfortable. I see the fidgety. It gets uncomfortable. It gets uncomfortable. But that's how we can humble ourselves and trust that God is who he says he is. You know, I, I just, I don't know how else to say that, but to say this. This time of year, this time of year, more than ever, we try to find the right gift to say that we gave the best gift. Right? For our favorite person. I mean, really, don't we? And I want to tell you the best gift that you can give someone this year. Don't put this in a stocking and blame it. Well, the pastor said at church, it's all I had to give you. Don't say that because I don't want somebody mad at me. The best gift you can give someone is honoring them to show them Jesus like never before. Because the only gift he can give them is life. The only gift you can give them is temporary. That's it. So this time of year when we want to honor one another, let's humble ourselves and say, hey, I'm not who I used to be because of Jesus. I'm certainly not where I want to be, but I'm definitely not where I used to be. And so this time of year, I want to tell you, if we want to honor one another to glorify God, we've got to stand there and do that. We've got to get uncomfortable. We've got to go out on a limb. We've got to be humble at what we do. And I know that that can be, it can seem easy, but I want to say this time of year more than ever, that's how we show the world who Jesus is. Because they just see Jesus as Santa Claus giving free gifts, right? And Jesus came into this earth to be more than, than Santa Claus. He came into this earth not to just give a gift of one night. He, gave in this, he came into this earth to give us the gift of eternity. And he came down humbly, humbly, so that now all of us can be honored and sit in the best seat. Think about that. And yet we fight to be in a certain seat. So let's continue the story as we go on. Uh, inside of this. John 3.30 talks about this, about honor's humbleness in this. It says that he must become greater, I must become less. Matthew 20.28 20, goes on to tell us, just as the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. Goes on in Galatians 5.13, we got to talk about this a little bit earlier today. You, my brothers and sisters, were called to be free. Do not use your freedom to indulge the flesh, rather serve one another humbly Humbly in love. See, the thing that talked about humbleness a lot of times comes with our servitude. Are we willing to serve one another? Because that sometimes can make us be really, really humble if we're willing to serve. And that's going to bring the most honor and glory to God, guys. But we've got to be willing to serve. We've got to be willing to take that step. Let's continue our story. Luke 14, verses 12 through 14 says this. Then Jesus said to his host, when you give a luncheon or dinner, a luncheon, good times. When you give a covered dish, y'all, praise God for covered dish. When you give a cover, when you give a covered dish, y'all, that's exactly what he said. That's the Southern Baptist translation version or the Southern slang translation version. You're welcome. Do not invite your friends, your brothers, or your sisters, your relatives, or your rich neighbors. If you do, they may invite you back, and so you will be repaid. But when you give a banquet, invite the poor, the crippled, the lame, the blind and you will be blessed although they cannot repay you you will be repaid at the resurrection of the righteous Romans 12 verses 4 through 8 goes on to say it this way goes on to say it this way actually you know what I wanted to give you the point then we'll go to Romans 12 the point here is a uh, gifted miscalculation excuse me the gifted miscalculation and we'll find that in Romans 12 what that is so the first thing we talked about all the way through is the uncomfortable comfortable then honors humbleness. And the third way that we can honor one another to glorify God is understand this thing called the gifted miscalculation. So before we go to Romans 12, what if we sat here and said that I gave the best parties, right? Like, you, we all have that friend, let's be real. We have multiple of those friends probably in our life that give the best parties, right? And since they do, we think, man, they're so gifted. They're so talented. My gift isn't used for that. I could never do like that. I can never be that good. That's just, I can't do that. And what I want to tell you in the gifted miscalculation here is Jesus is saying, hey, when you throw this banquet, I'm sitting here eating lunch with you. So when you throw this banquet, instead of inviting all of your rich neighbors that know who I am and don't care who I am, why don't you invite the people that need to be healed? 
that don't understand who I am, the one that's bloated that needs healing, the one that the ones that have begged you for what they have to do to be healed. And he calls that the poor, the needy, the crippled, and the lame. Because here's the thing, guys. We'll go to Romans 12, but here's the thing. There was a moment in time I was poor, blind, crippled, and lame. I was blind. I was blind to my sin. I was poor because I had nothing to live for. I had nothing to live for. I didn't have a purpose. I was lame because I wasn't walking with Jesus. And I was crippled from that. And yet, and yet Jesus gave me life. Jesus allowed me to see who I really am. And he revealed who he really is to me. Now I can take next steps in him. I can grow in him. Because he invited me to the table. The question is, this time of year, as we walk through this season of family events and crazy parties and all these things we have to get in, who are we inviting? Are we taking part in the lives of people who don't know who Jesus is? Or are we just going to sit back and sit on our high horse and talk about how great it is that we're saved and not share it with everyone else? Because I want to tell you, the best gift that Jesus had is he had the gift of being the Son of God. And instead of holding it himself, he came down to this earth and freely gave it away. That's what this season's about. He freely gave it away to you and me, the ones who didn't deserve it, who were blind, lame, needy, crippled, had no hope, no hope, nothing we could do could have hope for it. And yet he came down and gave that gift away. So why would we do any different? Why would we keep that gift to ourselves, especially this time of year? Why would we keep it to ourselves? Why would we not freely give it away as it was given to us? So when we talk about this gifted miscalculation, so many times because of that, we can be paralyzed because we think, well, I'm not as good as this person. I don't have the gifts they have. So my gift isn't as good as theirs. And I want to tell you the miscalculation is every gift matters. Romans 12, 12 talks about this in verse 4 through 8. He goes on to say, for each of us has... For each of us has one body with many members, and these members do not have all the same function. So in Christ, though, so in Christ we, though many, from one, form one body. Each member belongs to all of the others. We have different gifts according to the grace given to each of us. If your gift is prophesying, then prophesy in accordance with your faith. If it is serving, then serve. If it is teaching, then teach. But if it is to encourage, give encouragement. If it is giving, then give generously. If it is to lead, do it diligently. If it is to show mercy, mercy do it cheerfully. So as that's on the screen, and I just want to hang in here with it, I want you to hang in here with me, and we're, we're walking through this. Remember a couple of weeks ago, we had a puzzle piece? I don't know if any of you still have that. We wrote a date on it. And the thing we talked about with a puzzle piece is it made this awesome, awesome puzzle of a birthday cake. You know how I feel about that. I'm going to say it was banana pudding, even though it wasn't. It was an awesome, awesome picture of a birthday cake. But the pieces individually... It's like, this is one piece. Like, what the heck is this? But you remember, that piece connects to all the others to make a beautiful picture and a beautiful story of what God is trying to do and the story he's trying to write for each and every one of us. And so as we talk about this gifted miscalculation, he's done the same things with your gifts. I'm gifted at one thing, you're gifted at another, but it takes us both bringing our gifts together and laying it at the feet of Jesus and saying, use it for your glory. I can't do this by myself. I can't. I wish I could tell you how great I was and how I, can, I could get all these goals together and get all these chairs on here and get this screen up by myself and, and get these tables up and sing songs, bless y'all's heart, uh, all by myself and, and do all this all by myself. And I can tell you, if you know anything about my work ethic, I dang sure will do everything I can. I bet I could pull it off, but it wouldn't be what God wanted it to be. You would definitely see my gift in was not song. And it was not worship. You would definitely, you would just be like, hit the mute button. Tim, hit the mute button. Somebody hit the mute button on his mic. Turn him off. Turn him off. <laughs> get the track on. Get the track on. But like that puzzle piece, I realized that each and every one of you are a piece of the puzzle of what God's trying to do here in the Vine Church. And it takes all of us coming together. It takes all of us loading in and loading out. It takes all of us praying over each other each and every week. It takes all of us serving one another each and every week. Making sure that all of us know that we're connected to something greater than us. It takes us seriously just shooting out a text to say, how's it going? Hey, it was great to see you at church Sunday. But so many times we take that for granted because we think, oh, they'll be here next week. 
They'll be good. They'll be here next week. And we miss out on the opportunity to use our gift, maybe to encourage them. Maybe that's our gifting. Maybe we got some prophecy, and we can drop that in their life and say, hey, I see what Jesus wants for you this week, and I'm going to pray that his blessings be on you. Maybe they're walking through the craziest time in the world, and your text is what sets them free to talk to somebody about it. But so many times we think our gift isn't enough. We want to step back and think, oh, God, i got to ride on somebody's back. <laughs> oh, no, I can't do No, I can't. i got to tell somebody what I'm thankful for. Oh, my gosh, I don't, I don't even know them. I'm thankful that you have a mustache. Like, right? Like we're trying to figure out it's so uncomfortable. But I'm going to beg you at this time of the year, operate in an uncomfortable comfort by being humble to give God the most glory by honoring one another and understand your gift is not something to be wasted because the Savior of the world could have thrown his away. He definitely didn't need to give us the gift of life. And yet so many times it's the thing we take for granted the most because we think we've got fire insurance. Jesus didn't die just to prevent us from going to hell. He died so that we can make a difference in this world. And so today, if you think and know that God's called you to be a part of the Vine Church, I'm going to beg you, come to our sowers class. See how your gifting can make a difference. Maybe somebody's not here today that you know that is gifted at something. Invite them. Have them come be a part. Because the thing is, you're missing out. And it's not that make the Vine Church great. It's to make the church great. Because all together, the church is one body. Not one versus the other. And as we'll talk next week when we talk more about the Vine Church and what we do at the Vine Church to support the church, you will see that we live that each and every day because we believe in it. Jesus died for it. And if he died for it, it's well enough for me to fight for it. It's well enough for me to get uncomfortable. It's well enough for me to humble myself and say I don't have it all together. I can't do it all alone. And it's it's great for me to stand and say that I will use the gifts God's given me. I'm just begging you to use yours. That's all I'm asking. And so today, as we get done and we wrap up, I just want to, the last thing we have is honestly, at the Vine Church, as I see the, the everybody grasping it all together, we believe in honoring one another to glorify God. And so my question is, what about you? Can you say that you've remained silent like the Pharisees? Can you say that you've gotten uncomfortable for the Lord this week? You got uncomfortable for the Lord today. You may not have realized it, but you did. You honored one another. Can you say that you've humbled yourself to honor someone else? Can you say that you've always thought the best? Can you say that you've searched for gifts for temporary glory? Or have you used the gifts that God specifically called you and made you for, for his glory? And if you haven't, I'm not here to beat you up. I mess up every day. I'm sure I don't use all my gifts to his glory. But I can tell you, if we'll all come together and use our gifts for God's glory, oh, the difference that we'll make. Oh, the people's lives that will be changed. The healing that will happen. The people that will be set free will get to stand up. And the people who seem to have it all together are going to see that people who don't have it all together will be healed. People who don't have it all together will see Jesus for the first time. And all of a sudden, those with hard hearts will now all of a sudden be softened. That's why Jesus went to the religious leader's house. That's why of all the places he could have ate, of all the people, he went to Zacchaeus' house. He went to the tax collector's house. He went to the sinner's house. He was a glutton is what they called him. A drunkard and a glutton is what they called Jesus because of who he hung out with. So he decided to hang out with the religious people and heal someone. Today, let's hang out with more than just religious people. Let's show people the only one that can heal them. The only gift that they're searching for. It's not going to be what you stuff in that stocking in a few weeks. It's not going to be that gift you put under the tree that's going to set people free. It's the gift of eternal life and the hope of Jesus. That's the only thing that each and every person is searching for. That they seem to find frantically more than anything this time of year. If you think I'm wrong, look at the Black Friday videos on YouTube. And watch the people trampling themselves. My dream is what if the church was that full that people trampled themselves to get in it because so many people were using God's gift and his name was lifted so high that people were breaking down the doors to get in his house. That's what he's called me to. And that's what he's called each and every one of you to. The question is, will we step into it? Will we step into it? So, I will tell you this. 
I will not stay silent. I will not stay comfortable. I will not give myself glory. Instead, I will give God's name the most glory. And I will not waste the gift that God's given me. I have to say that every morning to remind myself, today is not a day that's worth wasting because he gave it to me. So let's pray here at the end of the service. So for some of you today, you've heard me rally and rail (laughs) about honoring one another to glorify God. And maybe you're realizing that you're searching right now. You've been searching your whole life for something, something to give you peace, something to set you free, something that nothing in this world has given you, something that, man, would just be nice to have, something that goes through the times, goes through the circumstance. And today, I'm just going to ask you, have you ever received the gift of eternal life? Have you ever received the gift that Jesus has given? See, here's the thing about gifts. We don't give to receive, contrary to popular belief. Contrary to popular belief. We give, we give so that others can be blessed. And so right now, I'm just going to ask you to repeat this prayer after me. For the benefit of those who are coming to the Lord for the first time today, I'm going to ask you to repeat this prayer. And it goes like this. Dear Jesus, I believe I'm a sinner. I believe you died on the cross for my sins, but love me enough not to stay dead, but left an empty tomb so that I may have life. I accept your gift, Lord. Come take over my life. Teach me how to follow you step by step the best way I know how the rest of my life. And if that's you, with every head bowed and every eye closed, the only person looking right now is me. I'm going to ask if that's the first time that you've prayed that prayer and you know that that's the first time you've accepted the gift that only Jesus can give. I'm going to ask you to raise your hand. Don't be afraid. Be bold. Get uncomfortable for a minute because we just have folks that want to celebrate with you. So get ready. One, two, three. Maybe that's not you. And I just want to pray for you. Maybe, maybe you're at a place to where you know God's gifted you for something greater, to be a part of something bigger, but you just don't know what it is and you're trying to figure it out. I'm going to pray that you have clarity and peace about that today. And then we're going to worship and then we're going to have closing prayer and have a great, awesome Sunday and honoring one another to glorify God. So dear Jesus, I just pray that we would we would have our eyes open to what you would have us be and have us do. God, we know that you've gifted us. We know that you made us to be something that only we could be. You chose us for a time just as this. So today, whatever that gift is that you're trying to reveal to us, we pray that you would hear that we would hear your still soft voice, that we would lean in and get uncomfortable that we would be willing to humble ourselves to say that we need help and that we would not waste the gift that you've given us. We love you, Lord, and it's your wonderful and precious name we pray. Amen. You guys stand and sing with us. Chains are gone. I've been set free. My God, my Savior, stands on me. And like a flood, His mercy reigns. I am in love.
All right, we have fun today. We have a good day at church. Yeah? Some folks did. Okay, most folks did. Cue the laugh track for the E-Fam. We'll be good for the E-Fam. They'll get the laugh track online. So, hey, guys, you know we get to honor one another to glorify God each and every week. Before we grab chairs, though, you know that we love to pray together. So before I do that, I want to tell you, if it's your first time hanging out with us and I haven't got to say hello to you, I'm going to be hanging out over here in the garden, the magical garden after the service. I'd love to connect with you, answer any questions you may have, uh, and also just help you. Maybe your next step is to, to come hang out with us at Sower's class. I'd love to give you the information on that. You could just come find me, and we'll have a good time there. But also, today, I hope that that is a challenging service. I believe you're bold enough to step into the challenge God has for you, and I just want you to, to accept that challenge today. Whatever that is, step into it. So... You know when we go, before we get chairs, you've got to get your arms locked around somebody because nobody prays alone in this house. So get your arms around somebody. Uh, I know that can be really difficult, cold and weird. Everybody wore deodorant. I checked beforehand. I might not have. Don't judge me. I might not have. And if you got a spouse, definitely make sure you... There we go. There we go. Kim, we just left you hanging, man. I'm going to high-five you. We're going to get it. Me and you, we're together, man. <laughs> there we go. Look at that. Teamwork makes a dream work. All right. Let's pray, and then uh, we'll get our chairs. Okay, so King Jesus, thank you for this day. Jesus, thank you for the gift that you've given us, because there's nothing in this world anybody else could give us that could ever satisfy like your love, like your gift of everlasting life. So as we go into this crazy busy season, and we think of all the thousand things we get to do, let us not lose focus on what it is. You humbly coming down, becoming man, so that we can have life because now we get to sit in the best seat only because you first came. So thank you, Jesus, for giving us life. Today, Jesus, as we go out and we go into this season and we eat way too much turkey, we pray for 10 calories. We won't go zero because we know the turkey's a little fattening. 10 calories over our Thanksgiving meal. Let us come back here next week and just shout to the rooftops your name. We love you, Lord, and it's your name we pray. Amen. All right, if you could grab two chairs and throw them over at the pad. I'll be over there in just a second.